Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Moretta from PNW Bettas, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how I take care of over 100 bettas. So along with just being a crazy betta keeper and having over 20 different individual tanks, I am also a breeder and an import seller. So that means I'm breeding some of my own fish and I'm also wholesaling fish from places like Indonesia and Thailand. I'm bringing these fish, importing them into the United States, quarantining them, and then I'm selling them. So all these fish that I'm bringing into my fish room, whether it be ones that I'm breeding myself or I'm importing from overseas, there ends up being quite a few of them. By quite a few, I mean anywhere from 50 to 250. Now looking around behind me, you may have already figured out how I house all of these fish because it's not in 250 individual tanks, but there is a very specific way that I make sure everything is done to keep these fish healthy and well taken care of before they're sold and go to their forever homes. Now the way that I house all these fish is something called a jarring system. This is super common for importers and super common for breeders as it's an efficient way to both effectively and safely house large numbers of specifically bettas. So bettas are very aggressive fish. They will fight one another if put in close proximity in a tank with one another. Um, and even just seeing one another can actually be very stressful for long periods of time. So they have to be all kept separately. So today I'm going to show you how I house all these fish, how I clean and water change all their containers, and just how I go through this whole process of housing hundreds of fish in my fish room. I'm also going to show you guys a little bit of what it looks like to feed this many fish and what I feed them. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I wanted to do was share a little bit of my jarring system. So this is how I house all of the fish, and this is kind of a look at some of the containers that I use. So these two shells right here actually are holding all wild type bettas. On these two shelving units, I have 48 individually housed wild bettas that were imported from Thailand from Frank's Bettas. Each one of these containers are one gallon containers and most of them I've actually underfilled. So wild bettas are super prone to jumping. So I actually underfill these and they're not super consistent. Some of them are different levels, but they're all underfilled to prevent any chance of jumping. So like I said, everything on these two shelves are wild type bettas. So that means that they are either hybridized like the aliens or they're just standard wild types. Like this right here is a betta maha chiensis. And so these were all from Frank's bettas. They're imported from Thailand and I have them all with this tannin water, which you'll notice in a lot of my jars. And it's that tint to the water, which is going to basically just be the addition of tannins. And it's super, super beneficial to the fish. The other thing you may have noticed is all of these little paper dividers between the fish. And this is how I prevent them from getting stressed out from seeing each other all day. So you'll see right here, I removed these little paper dividers and I'm just letting them flare at each other. I'll let them do this periodically because it is healthy in moderation, but I just don't want them doing this kind of behavior all day because that can be really stressful. So it's really fun to see you know, for a couple minutes to see them flare. These are both green alien males. They're both very, very aggressive and very beautiful, but I don't want them doing this all day. So I'll just do it for a little bit. I'll let them get in some exercise and then I can put these little pieces of paper back between them and then they can no longer see each other and they'll stop flaring. Now, as fun as those two shelves are, they are definitely not my only shelves. I have multiple other ones going on. The ones I'm showing you right now have domestics and wild types. And on this shelf, you'll also see some different containers. So these are some I got from a zebrafish lab. These were some I just bought individually. These are some beanie boxes. And then we have more of those one gallon containers. So because I'm not a retail store, I don't have people coming in. I don't really care so much about having them all look uniform. Um, I just care about them having enough space to house the fish and getting enough water changes. So I don't really mind if some of them are different shapes. I just more look at the volume rather than the shape of the container. And these as well have all the little dividers. My preference is the colored paper. Sometimes I run out and I use regular paper, but I think these look really cool. I know a lot of people will have adverse reactions to seeing fish in such small containers. And I think that's a totally valid response. I totally understand where people are coming from. You know, I think back to what where I was just a couple years ago, and I probably would have had that same reaction. Um, but one thing that I've learned over time, you know, doing this hobby and getting into the breeding and selling aspect is that 
you know, first off, these are really very temporary. Um, the, the, the max amount of time that they tend to be in here is maybe just one or sometimes even two months. But I think one month is about my average um, for the amount of time the fish are in these containers. And during that time, they get many water changes, which is the next thing I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how I do that and how tell you how frequent. Um, they also have a really good quality diet and they get um, enrichment by doing this kind of flaring right here. So I'll encard them once a day or once every other day, um, especially after they eat. I find that really helpful for food digestion. And I just let them get some exercise. So they're still getting enrichment. They're getting clean, warm water. My whole fish room is actually heated. It's unfortunately very hot and humid in here. Um, but they have all of the necessary aspects that they need to be healthy. Now, this isn't what I would recommend for long-term setups, and it's actually very far from it. I've made a whole um, in-depth care video on beta care. So if, if you wanna check that out, I highly recommend it. I can make a separate one for wild species and wild types. Um, even though it's very, very similar. Um, but I think that's just important to notice that it's very temporary um, and it's just meant to keep the fish healthy, active, well-fed, great quality diet for the temporary situation before they go to the person who's gonna have them for the next couple of years. Now, the thing that I end up doing a ton of to take care of all these fish is water changes. So many water changes. So obviously this is a very small volume of water. It's not cycled, even though it is heated. So I have to change the water very often to make sure it stays clean for the fish. So I do these, I change out all of the water in every single container three times a week. So this may look kind of funky, but it's one of my favorite things in my fish room. This is my clean water bin, and this is actually where I house all the water that I'm going to be using in my water changes. You'll notice it's kind of a funky color. Um, that's because this water actually is filled with tannins. That's also why it has this giant leaf in it. So I boil different types of botanicals. This just happens to be a really cool looking banana leaf because it's what I happen to have a lot of. But I boil all these different botanicals. I let them soak and release their tannins into the water. And then this has a lot of really beneficial properties to the fish. So it's going to help bring out their color. It will help promote breeding behavior, obviously not relevant in this case, um, but it's also just going to help reduce stress and just give them a really naturalistic environment. So one thing that's really, really important to me when it comes to water changing all of these jars is biosecurity. So that basically means I'm having the least possible amount of cross-contamination between the fish to prevent any sort of possible chance of disease spread between them. These fish are coming from different countries and different farms. And in the rare occurrence that there is some sort of disease or a fish comes down with something while it's in transit, you know, it is a stressful process. They are more prone to having illnesses in those cases, but they then aren't spreading it around the fish room to all the other fish. So over time, I figured out a way to water change all the jars that didn't involve using the same siphon or the same net to scoop all the fish out. And I basically figured out a way that I could get all the water out, but also not cross contaminate the fish. So the last thing I wanna share with you guys is what and how I feed all of these fish. So what I'm feeding mostly is actually frozen food. I brought my giant stack of frozen food from my freezer, which was kind of a mistake because this is really cold and it kind of hurts my hands to hold on to. But I wanted to show you what I actually am feeding these guys. So one of the main foods that I feed is frozen bloodworms. I buy Hikari um, for basically everything because it is my favorite brand for frozen food. I think it's the highest quality and they have really good sanitization processes. Um, so Hikari, frozen bloodworms. I always buy the one pound flat packs because they're the most economical. Something else I feed a lot of is frozen brine shrimp, also by Hikari and also the one pound flat packs. But I'm also occasionally gonna switch it up and add things like frozen Daphnia and frozen myosis shrimp to their diet to, just to give them some variety. That's not to say that I never feed things like pellets, but the majority of the time I'm feeding this stuff, the frozen food. Now the way I actually feed all of these guys is really simple. I just thaw the frozen food in a little cup like this, and then I just have a little pipette and I can suck it up and put a little bit into each container.
I've had people ask me in the past, how much do I feed each fish? And I really don't have a good answer for that. I'm sorry, um, because I've really just gotten pretty good at eyeballing the amount I need to feed each fish at this point. So when it comes to each one, I kind of just eyeball the amount as I'm putting it into the jar. Um, but you kind of just get a feel after a while how much each fish needs. So their tummy looks full, but not overly bloated after eating. That's gonna bring us to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching how I care for all of my bettas and thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time.